Hey, uh, Steve Spencer, partner at SMB Capital, prop firm in New York City. I wanted to share with you a few minutes from our morning meeting. So what we're trying to do in the morning meeting is prepare members of the trading desk and the trading community um, to trade on a particular particular day. And what you need to understand, just for a frame of reference, is the majority of the trading that goes on on our desk, 70 to 80 percent P&L is generated um, from inter intraday trading. And But I'm also speaking with respect to my views on swing trading, and there's obviously many traders on our desk have long-term accounts and they're putting on swing positions. And so I wanted to share today because the market um, has had a significant bounce off the lows. This is an area we've been targeting um, for a bounce since the lows. And kind of how a short-term trader thinks once their target area has been reached. Um, also something to pay attention to is uh, the market is asymmetrical. It isn't the same when it's going down in terms of when you're looking for a balance versus versus a top. The market behaves differently, and we're always going to be more cautious um, on a short-term top. But but nevertheless, based on the notes you can see from my morning game plan and and kind of the levels that we were using and my commentary, we were looking for a, a short-term top uh, right after the open and um, a pullback to kind of the, the, the levels that we've highlighted in the game plan notes. And if you want to find out more about our process, go to tradingworkshop.com, where I kind of review our, our stock selection process, um, as well as three of the uh, top trading setups that we use on our prop desk. As I put in the game plan notes, um, kind of hit the, bump, the bounce target off of the low. Basically this area right here. Uh, so, um, and just because we hit this target so quickly and already, um, doesn't mean we're gonna immediately do a retest of 264, 265 or something. Um, but it is time to start thinking about how to hedge off some of your risk if you you were long calls for the last week or something, um, to look at puts, things like that. Um, I know the more aggressive uh, people that I've seen in the last couple of weeks were calling for, um, I think the most aggressive I saw was 285. <laughs> I do have a tendency to be more conservative, both on the way up and the way down. But um, you can kind of see we're we're holding above 273 now a little bit. Um, but that's like my thought process. So if I have like you know 285 calls for what are we April from next month, you know maybe I maybe I can sell some 280s against it or something like that, um, since they've gone up in price a lot recently to kind of hedge off some of the risk. Um, can look at. If you want to pay for some puts, you know, pay for some like 260 puts or something like that, or 255s, um, you could sell some 295s maybe. Yeah, that's, that makes sense, right? Because that, that might pay for a good chunk of it. Um, you kind of want to sell up in an area where you, you just don't really think the market can get to. Um, or if it does, you definitely want to be short. And I would think any, you know, anywhere close to 300, you definitely would want to be short. And I think even here you want to be short. We're even already talking about it in the 270s. So you don't you don't know how much uh, where the bounce will top out, but um, but you want to start to kind of shift uh, now that we're 25% off the low. Um, so this is usually you know you get the move, then you get some sort of sideways in and up, or you get some sort of sideways pullback in and up. And so you never know how the pattern's going to play out, but what you know is pretty much every time you get some big bounce, no matter what the reason for the down move was, no matter how bad things seem for the world. Um, so that's that. The other thing I would notice was on the way down, we were just getting a lot of gaps to the downside. Then we'd move sideways and go a little bit lower. This seems like we're getting the opposite now. So it wasn't like, if you look at the down channel, like there's a lot of green days in there. Like we bought it, you know, we gapped from 247, we, uh, we gapped up and then like the next down leg, we gapped to 240. 
we were moving sideways. Um, and there was, this was a big gap here from two, I mean, this was 295 to two, say, $20 gap there. Um, this gap here, 275 to 265. So there's a $10 gap down, a $20 gap down. The gaps on the way up haven't been as big. I mean, yesterday was 10 and today is eight, but, but you get the idea. So a lot of the, and what I'm basically saying is even though there's been money intra, like yesterday, intraday, we moved up a lot. A lot, a lot of the up move is, is happening in gaps, just like in the first, I don't know, $40 are down 30 of the 40 was, was in gaps. Um, but my, my thought is for today that we could put in the high right on the open or in the first 30 minutes and get a decent pullback, um, even though Europe's very strong. Let's see here. Yeah. I mean, that we get, people will start to talk more bullish now, now that we're $50 off the low or 60 to whatever it is off of the spies, <clears throat> $55 off the low. Looks like the bottom's in. Yeah, great. Thanks for telling me the bottom's in. Um, and, you know, that, that should create a short-term top should so um certainly a pullback at least to 270 would be reasonable let's say pre-market london the london open the low is 271 so even if we like spiked up to 274.50 on, on the the open and then pulled into 271 that would be a three and a half dollar pullback here's the uptrend from yesterday it's kind of working its way up towards 272 